Hello everyone. Um, here I am continuing um, finishing up my orthographic views so I can start modeling. Um, this video is sped up about 400%, so I thought instead of um, boring you guys to death, uh, I would just kind of narrate along as it plays. Now most of this stuff um, I'm doing is nothing new. Everything I've covered already in either um, the first part of this orthographic, creating the orthographics video, or um, when I did the concept art. Um, at the moment, I'm just sort of going around and creating a fine, um, a nicer line work for my orthographic views, my front and side views. Um, it's important to point out that you should always warm up uh, before you start drawing, just by drawing anything. You know, if you if you really like drawing eyes or or just heads, I, I just tend to warm up by drawing heads. But you'll notice at the very beginning of this um, video, I started out my lines being very tight, and um, by now I'm kind of loosening up and um, getting a little more sketchy, uh, which is what I like. I like having that sketchy feel to my drawings. Um, so you should always spend some time, you know, even like five, ten minutes just warming up, drawing anything you want, um, just so you can kind of get comfortable um, in your seat again. You know, it's like a workout. You always warm up before you work out. So it's sort of the same thing. So um, <clears throat> I'm never really um, going to, you know, I'm drawing a lot of details here and um, it's important to keep in mind that you don't have to stick to any of these details verbatim. Um, you, especially when it's a, a character of your own design, um, you know, it's a little different when you have concept art that's not yours that you have to model a character to, but um, whenever you're creating a character that's your own design, you always have the creative freedom to change that character at any point. So if, you, um, if you're in the middle of the modeling process after you have your orthographics done, and you feel like maybe the arm should be a little longer or shorter or the fingers should be longer or if there's any details that aren't in the orthographic but you just want to try and play around with you can do that um, it's not a bad thing to add details that aren't in your concept art or um, orthographics it's kind of it's your creation so you should always give yourself the creative freedom to change things as you go and um, and I always, you know, you stick to your concept art to a certain amount, but at, at any point, if you want to add some details or change things, you can. You know, if I want to give this guy um, longer fingers or if I want to give him horns or antlers or something like that somewhere in the middle of my modeling process, I can do that. Maybe I'll go in and, and add them to the concept art later, but um, it's... Uh, it's good to, to keep in mind that you have creative freedom to change things. So I think I've finished up with the, um, the front and side views here. Uh, and what I'm going to do next is uh, and add a little bit of color to this. And this isn't necessarily um, to color it. You know, I'm just using shades of gray. This is kind of a, just kind of a visual guide for me. Um, it's going to help me when I'm modeling it, and it just makes it look a little nicer. But I'm just going to go in and um, and add some some tonal uh, variations in the materials that that will just sort of help separate out the different materials and objects in the scene. And like I said, it will make it just look a little bit nicer and finished. Um, so. At this point, I'm just going in and I'm outlining with uh, a gray color, and then I'll use my paint bucket to fill in that specific color, just like so. And um, I always find it easier to paint outside of the lines at first and then go back and erase. So that's what I'm doing now is just erasing all of those lines that follow outside of the the um, the uh, drawing, the line work. 
Um, <clears throat> and you can also use this as a guide, and that's basically what I'll do uh, in a second once I have this all cleaned up, is I'll basically click on my lock um, transparent pixels button on my uh, layer, and then I can color in those lines of that gray color without going outside. And um, there I just found a little piece that I wanted to clean up. So I'm just cleaning up all those lines. And again, this is sped up to 400%, so certainly don't, uh, don't try to work at this speed. Um, And again, I'm I'm kind of doing this really quickly to, uh, to so I, we can hurry up and get this guy into Maya and start modeling him. Um, and you should, you know, if it's great to put in as much detail as you want into these, um, but don't get too um, too obsessed over those tiny details. Um, I think as long as you have like a loose feel to it and a um, a nice concept and you've kind of fleshed out all the little tiny details and and things like that uh, if it looks a little sketchy or if a color is slightly outside of the line it's no big deal that's not something you should really um, obsess over <clears throat> all right so I'm just adding another shade of gray here to kind of break up some of these objects I'm just Periodically, I go back and check my concept art to, um, to see if, uh, if I'm getting all the details right or close to right. Again, they don't have to be um, verbatim. So, pants. And again, I'm just kind of blocking out, oh, outlining the colors and then using my uh, paint bucket. Okay, so here I remember that I had my staff on a separate layer just by itself. So I'm just going to pull that over into my orthographic views <clears throat> so I can kind of accessorize this guy. And uh, in a second, I'll draw um, the other accessories that he's going to have with him. Um, so that saved me a lot of trouble because I didn't have to re redraw that staff. I already had it on a separate layer. And you can do that with, you know, a lot of things if you want to separate them out as you're drawing the uh, concept art. Um, it'll make it easier, you know, save you some time because you don't have to redraw things over and over again. So now I'm just kind of uh, separating, out, separating out some of the the elements of that staff. So we have the wood, which is one shade of gray, the crystal, which is a very light gray, and then the, um, the little leather straps. Okay, so I think um, what I'm going to do next here is um, I'm just kind of fiddling around with the background color to see if I can get it to kind of pop more. I think in the end I, I go back to what I originally had. Um, I just couldn't get it to work the way it was. Um, okay, so now I'm going to start drawing out some of the other accessories like the backpack and, uh, and the sword. And so just very roughly sketching these out and I'll, I'll add more detail and draw over them. And um, I start out here by drawing them all together like they are in the scene. And then I think, well, maybe it would be better if I uh, separated them out a little bit. So here I'm going to kind of draw a better view of that uh, backpack uh, by itself without the sword or the, um, or the sleeping bag on. So, and I'm just trying that out to see how it looks, and, and I'm pretty sure that that's, uh, that was the right way to go. So I erase the other one. Um, I draw that rucksack, the, uh, the sleeping bag, very just very loosely at first I'm just trying to get the idea of them and the placement of them and uh, and then I'll go in and, and refine them and add a little bit more detail and you know this is pretty much the same way I drew the character I just went in and drew everything very rough at first um, 
not really caring too much about my line quality. And then I would just go in and, and um, make a new layer and every time just get a little bit more detailed and, um, and figure out some of the little things going on with that, the object. And I kind of play around with the, the straps on the uh, backpack quite a bit, trying to figure out how I could get them to, to work. And again, this is a detail that's probably going to change quite a bit when I actually start modeling the backpack. Because I'm going to figure out, you know, that I, I just don't really explain everything in the drawing um, the way the way the logistics of it would actually work out in real life. So then the sword, and I'm just making those super straight lines just by holding down shift and, uh, and drawing with my paintbrush. And the, the straight lines are cool to use as a guide, um, but I tend to, you know, I, after I kind of finish up with this layer, I'll go over and just draw them freehand, um, just because it gives it that, that element of, of natural a natural line. Whenever you have something very sketchy, which for the most part everything in my scene is very sketchy, and whenever you put like a super um, sharp mechanical straight line, it kind of um, breaks the uh, the design properties of everything, and and it doesn't match up with the way the design of everything else is. So um, it's important to uh, to kind of stay consistent with your design. So that's why I go in. And even um, after I draw that straight line, I go in and kind of draw it freehand so it looks a little bit more like everything else. Um, you know, because currently nothing in my scene has a straight line on it um, except for that sword. So might as well stay consistent with my design. And again, um, I don't have to stick to any, any of this any of these details verbatim. Um, I can always go in and change them when I'm modeling. And a lot of times you'll figure out that the way you drew something just doesn't work out logically. Um, the logistics of it just doesn't work. So you may actually have to go in and, uh, and redraw it. And chances are whenever I start modeling this backpack, I will have, you know, lots of image references of, uh, of backpacks so I can kind of see all the uh, details. These are the kind of the little hanging loops that the the sword's going to go in. <clears throat> and I do uh, kind of noodle around with these two straps for a while. I, I kind of don't like the uh, you know I'm just thinking about how this would work in the real in real life and and eventually I figure out that they would probably have some sort of button um, where they're attached to the, the flap of the bag. So that's, that's kind of what I go with. And, you know, again, I'll probably change this whenever I actually start modeling it, but um, this is a good starting point. And I have that sketch under it, so every once in a while I just turn that off. Here I am just drawing all those super straight lines that I had freehand so they don't look so straight. Kind of trying to add the the right sort of depth to the sword so it has a little bit of a, a 3D feel to it. Alright, so I'm, I'm kind of finished with those. Um, and I just want to start, again, separating out some of the tonal values of my objects. And this just helps me whenever I'm modeling to kind of visualize and think about how things are separate objects and um, the different ways to, to separate things out. And just kind of reinforces or reminds me that things are separate. <clears throat> and again, it, it just kind of looks nicer. Um, it looks a little bit more finished whenever you have some tonal value in your your artwork. Um, there's something very um, unfinished about just a black and white drawing. Um, and even if it is finished, um, 
it just looks like it's missing something a lot of times. <clears throat> So I'm just um, adding, again, the tonal value to make everything look a little nicer here. Um, and even though these are the same, some of these, like the straps here, are the same material and like the bedroll, I kind of did this with the bedroll, um, add two different tonal values to each side. Um, it just kind of helps it give it that feel that especially if you do like a darker value on the inside that one like the inside of that material is darker and sort of the same things happening with the um, the bedroll or the blanket so like one side of the material is is one tonal value and the other side of the material is another tonal value and here I am finishing up just quickly drawing in some color for the sword Okay, so I think I'm kind of finished there. I'm just making a, a box, um, a square shape, and adding. I dropped the fill all the way down so the color is transparent, and I'm just adding a line, a stroke around it, so it kind of makes it look like a little frame. It's framed up a little bit. Now I'm looking for a um, a concrete texture to kind of give uh, give the whole thing like a dirty, uh, grungy look to it kind of break up all those solid colors a little bit and um, and that's it done with the orthographic views <laughs>